Something else I wanted to hit on too. Um, I know you're a big believer in uh, networking and investing in relationships. Uh, you've developed a lot. And um, you know, what's fascinating to me, and I like to tell this story, is that you and I connected on LinkedIn. Um, I actually saw an article uh, talking about your your show. And yeah. uh, I was listening, I started reviewing some of your material and I was like, this He's doing this differently. Um, I liked the way that you approached sales and leadership and uh, wanted to connect. And so we started uh, developing a rapport. We've talked several times now and, and collaborated on a few projects. Um, and this is a relationship that wouldn't have existed without uh, without digital and without uh, social media. And um, I'm a big believer in leveraging that to make the relationship real, to open the door that wouldn't necessarily exist otherwise. But what you do with it after that is what's mm. so important. And I think that's what a lot of people might miss. What are yeah. your thoughts, Colin, on networking, uh, building yeah. relationship, and just the value of relationships in a career? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot to unpack in this because let's talk about some of like the common, common mistakes, right? People, uh, connect with people and then, you know, like LinkedIn, for example, that's where I spend most of my time. The other social platforms aren't as relevant to me. Um, and so, so many people connect on there and it's a good place to get the relationship started. Um, but they don't, ever, t you know, take it off the platform and have a conversation, um, you know, and, uh, or they, you know, don't lead with any sort of, you know, value. And so like an opportunity to create content together or collaborate with somebody is a great way to establish a relationship. Uh, but even just in that context, like, you know, most people will do that once, uh, and then they disappear. And, and, and this is, and this can even go into even certain selling styles, right? There's the sellers that get the deal and disappear. Right. Um, and so a lot of these, you know, practices are coming from leadership where it's all about the activities and the next deal. And, you know, these relationships are more important than most people realize because, you know, if, if you know, getting a deal and then the deal churning or getting a deal and then not actually investing enough in the relationship to be in a place where you're comfortable to ask for referrals. Uh, or they don't just naturally want to give you referrals. Um, that's a huge missed opportunity. And that's a major difference that can separate like an average seller versus an elite seller. Somebody who understands, you know, investing in the people in the relationship because their reputation matters, you know, what they do on social, what they do, you know, in sales meetings, what they do after they get the sale. All of those things play a big role in, you know, whether you're going to be an average seller or you're going to be an elite seller. And so, using social, it's the easiest way to get access to people, but that's just the beginning. And so what you do, you know, after you've maybe got their attention matters, you know, how you interact with those people, if you're really in it <clears throat> just to get something and not give anything, uh, that's going to probably ruin your reputation uh, right from the beginning. And what people don't realize, and there's still a lot of this going on, and it's less now because of, you know, some of the new restrictions where people are not, people are a little bit more cautious of who they're connecting with. People are, you know, not as quick to, uh, you know, throw throw up a big sales pitch, you know, in your DMs. But it's still happening um, because of some of the restrictions. But uh, like that's the biggest way to actually like ruin your chances of ever building any sort of trust or relationship with that person. Like their perception of you uh, immediately from the first interaction is is negative. And I just, it, it blows my mind how people have not figured this out yet. There is definitely a nuance uh, to all of it. And I think I was having a conversation about this the other day. The fact that it's so easily accessible by everyone dilutes the effectiveness of it because you've got so many other people that are out there using it may, maybe for the wrong reasons or using it the wrong way. But I think, first off, there's a great responsibility that comes with it, and that also gives the opportunity for people to do it right, to really stand out in a unique way, get noticed, and yield results as a as a direct result of it. Um, yeah. You know, I think part of it, we got to revisit the why. Like, why would we leverage social? Uh, it's because you can go where your audience is. Um, there's a mm -hmm. lot of power in that, you know. Um, I liken it as, like, being able to put a billboard out there on the road that they're driving every day. Yeah. Uh, but you 
got to make sure that it is ex that it exemplifies like what's your brand? What do you want your brand to say about you whenever you're connecting with this person? Because you nailed it, Kyle, and the perception is everything. If you put somebody off through that way, I mean, that's your your you're pretty much you've shot yourself in the foot as far as developing a relationship there. The social platform is a great place to start the relationship, but it's not the end all be all. And even when I coach and train social, I don't talk about just one thing, one platform. Yeah, LinkedIn has been great for me, but I build lists and I build valuable events and newsletters and just way to, ways to engage people in a way that I'm not always just trying to sell them something. It's like, hey, here's something of value to you that's part of the existing relationship and the existing investment. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, but if this is a value or like you hit, uh, you hit on, what can we do together? Um, is there something we could do from a partnership perspective or is there some kind of uh, content that we could create together? Um, look at what you can do together. Look at what you can deliver there together. Um, don't just start the relationship or the dialogue. Don't just sell something and then disappear. Relationships are everything. Um, yeah. Investing in relationships over time. Uh, I mean, every role that I've been pulled into in my career for the last probably 15 years, I've been pulled into because of a relationship that I made, except one. I found mm. one um, online that I applied to that I ended up getting. And the only reason my resume was noticed was because of a book I had written. That made my resume stand out. So finding the ways to exemplify what is unique about your brand and then also having relationships that you build, that's going to help you uh, tremendously in your career. The other thing, too, is you never know where that executive that you sold to at this organization is going to go. If you develop and yeah. keep a relationship there and they go to another organization, guess what? They're going to say, hey, I, I want to do business with Colin. He did me right at this organization. Um, I believe that he'll do the same here. So um, that's the importance of developing that relationship.